We are going to talk about one of the coolest things that I like to use when I go ice fishing for any species of fish. What's going on everybody? My name's Brian, you're watching Angling Anarchy. I'm usually doing musky videos, but every now and again, uh, we stray off the path and uh, do some multi-species stuff uh, and some ice fishing. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. Um, I wanna talk about a really cool product that I like to use instead of your standard tip up. And then we're gonna look at some really cool underwater footage and uh, talk shortly about how I was able to capture it. So the spot we're fishing, and we're fishing for pike, uh, so the spot we're fishing is ultra shallow water. I mean, from the bottom to the bottom of the ice is maybe 15 inches, 16 inches. So ultra, ultra shallow water, which is one of the reasons it was easy for me to get some underwater footage with some GoPros. So it's nice, high quality footage. But first I want to talk about what we were using to catch them. So uh, what I was using is called an Arctic Warrior. It's made by Clam Corporation. I will put a link in the description down below where you can buy one of these fun little things. But uh, basically, I'm going to lift it up here. It's a little platform that holds a rod, any jigging rod. And the nice thing about this is we're using it for pike in this application, but it's fantastic for crappies, it's awesome for walleyes, it's just fun to be able to catch fish not hand over hand but actually use a rod and reel. So that's why I enjoy using these. And the rod is just attached by uh, two pieces of Velcro. Um, there's this little, I don't even know what to call this little contraption, but it helps it to sit in this little yoke here, I guess for lack of a better term. Um, and I'm going to go over how I like to set this up for pike and then I'm going to show you how I set it up for lighter applications like crappies. The thing I really like about these Arctic Warriors is that you can set them in such a way that they are on free spool once the flag is tripped and uh, there's absolutely no resistance to the fish which is why I think it works nice for crappies and some lighter biting fish uh, like perch as well. So what we do to set it is you, there's a little dimple on that arm that's connected to the rod. The flag has a hook that hooks into it. And when you pull down on the line, the flag pops up. Now, that was just sh me showing you mechanically how it works. This is how I set it up so that it's on free spool. Grab the line, and once the line is held down, The flag hook holds it, and then we set it over here. And now, when the fish takes it, and we pull on the line over here, and it pops, the flag flies free of the line, and the fish can pull out line. And there's absolutely no resistance. You run over, uh, reel up on the fish, feel the weight, set the hook, and away you go. You get to fight the fish on a rod, which I think is the best thing about this tip-up style of fishing. It's not your regular tip-up where you're just dragging the fish in. Um, you get to fight it on the rod and you have that zero resistance once the flag is tripped. When I set this up previously and showed you how it trips, uh, as I said, there's a little divot that that flag can sit in and I like using that when we're fishing with bigger bait for pike like shiners because then if if the bait is pulling a little bit you don't have to worry about getting false flags all the time. When I'm fishing for crappies uh, and you want something that's a little bit lighter you can actually just bear there's enough there's enough pressure that way that if you just barely catch the edge of that a uh, little metal piece that's on the on the rod uh, with the flag. And again, I'm not setting this up. I would set this up so that the line is running through it, but just for the sake of showing you, if you set it up that way, it doesn't take a lot for the flag to pop. And that's why I really like uh, using this for crappies. There have been times previously before we were fishing with these that we'd be using traditional tip-ups We'd get a ton of flags, a lot of drops, and you'd catch the occasional crappie. Um, spots where that was happening to us, where we've switched over to using just the Arctic Warrior, our panfish 
rate of catch went way, way up using this method. Enough about this. Uh, these are really cool. As I said, I'll leave a link in the description down below. And uh, real quick, the flag is, you know, it's about that big. I wrap them up like this just so I don't get wind flags. Um, it can be a problem if the wind's blowing really bad, so that's just one thing I do to uh, keep us from getting false flags. Without further ado, we're going to look at a clip of me catching a pike in some of the super shallow water. There's really cool underwater footage uh, that goes along with this and a, a nice little catch on an Arctic warrior. There we go. <laughs> yeah, you got pliers? They slid over there. There we go. We're not getting anything big here, but it's it's really fun fishing. So cool being able to see that pike come in and uh, hunt down that shiner and then to get it to hit and catch it on one of those Arctic Warriors again I think is just an absolute blast. I wanted to talk about how I was able to capture that though. We were in really shallow water and if you look at that shot again uh, you'll see an upside down tip up with kind of a clamp on it. There was a GoPro on the end of it. so. This is basically my uh, super sophisticated way of filming that underwater shot. Uh, so yeah, there was there's maybe three four inches of ice. There was plenty of uh, room uh, that this uh, clamp on accessory gave us to get the camera deep enough to capture uh, what we just watched there. So uh, not sophisticated at all. Uh, if the ice is a little bit thicker. I do have a couple of these made up that I've used there in the same spot. Just makes things a little bit longer. Again, if, if we're dealing with some ice just to get the camera down into the water, uh, I built some of those. So um, shallow enough that you didn't need uh, a camera, an underwater camera like a lot of guys use. Uh, and the f footage you get from those is getting a lot better. And uh, you know, I, I can't say anything bad about them, but being able to capture with a GoPro, you can up your, fr up your frame rate and get some really cool slow motion that way. And it's just a little bit higher quality when you can use a GoPro. Uh, now, obviously this one, uh, I'm just using this for show. Uh, if you've got uh, a GoPro that's older than a Hero 5, you'd want to have it in a waterproof case. Um, the newer ones are waterproof as long as you have all the compartments snapped together. The problem with having it submerged in that cold water is your battery life is maybe an hour at best. So um, just kind of have to set a timer, go change the batteries out. Uh, but yeah, that's how I was able to capture that underwater footage. And I've got some more that I'm going to play after this. Uh, we weren't able to catch any of these fish, but it just goes to show you how crafty these pike can be. Come up, uh, I mean, engulf a shiner with that uh, really sharp hook and shake their head and away they go. So all those times you go over and you've got a flag up and, and a little bit of line pulled out, uh, this is what those fish are doing. They're coming by, taking that line out, and somehow they're spitting the hook. So uh, really fun to watch. I hope you enjoy some of this underwater footage.
pretty fun stuff to watch there. Uh, pretty cool watching those pike come in and uh, just amazing how they're able to eat that shiner and spit it right back out even with those uh, tacky, sharp Gamma Katsu hooks. That's that for this week. I know it's not my regular stuff that I do, but uh, pretty fun to watch nonetheless. I've got some musky content still uh, from Lake St. Clair. Uh, one day left from that trip uh, from uh, last November. And I have plans in the works for this late winter spring season to get out and do some more musky fishing. So look forward to that. And with that, I will thank you for watching. I appreciate every single one of you. I can't thank you enough for subscribing and watching and all that jazz. So I will see you all in the next video.